an unwanted case turns into a chase across Europe. <clears throat> Nazis, art, and nuns join us on our journey of A Spying Eye, the sixth in the Henrietta and Inspector Howard series by Michelle Cox. Michelle is an award-winning historical fiction mystery author and blogger, and also a lover of the 1930s. <laughs> welcome to Blackbird Writers Presents Author Interviews, and welcome to you, Michelle. Hi, thanks for having me, Sharon. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Uh, so I loved, I, I say this to everybody, but I really <laughs> like reading. Um, <laughs> I loved your book, and I Michelle was kind Dang. enough to give me an advanced reading copy for A Spying Eye, and I was enjoying it so much, but I felt like I was missing something. So I went back and I uh, also read the first one. So I oh, have wow. <laughs> a, a full range of, oh, this is just awesome going on in my head. Um, <laughs> I'll try to stick to a spying eye. Um, but I do want to go back to uh, Henrietta, who is poor and from Chicago. She marries Clive. Um, and although he was born in America, he is an English aristocrat. However, the books take place in Chicago, at least at the beginning of the series. So tell me about that choice. Um, I believe you are from the Midwest, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I live in the Chicago suburbs. Um, yeah, you know, it's a good question. I, originally, I was just going to write one book, Just a Girl Like You, which is the first book. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of turned it into a series and I didn't just want to write about a detective and his wife in 1930s Chicago they always say write what you like to read and so I'm like oh I would love you know to have sort of some kind of English you know aristocrat sort of background thing going on and so I knew I had to sort of shift the series up a little bit so um Clive volunteered to to be the aristocrat, <laughs> being the gentleman that he is. <laughs> very gracious of him. Yes, <laughs> and it is it it is it is very fun. I just very fun. Um, so a follow up to that, a spying eye opens with them in England uh, because, as you said, Clive has volunteered <laughs> to become the <laughs> aristocrat. Um, but the rest of Henrietta's family is still in Chicagoland. So when you write, do you stay with, OK, I'm going to do all of Elsie in Chicago um, and then all of Henrietta in Europe? Or do you stay within the timeline and jump back and forth? You mean when I'm actually doing the writing? Yeah. Yeah, you know what, I jump back and forth. And I, I find that it sort of, it, it helps me to sort of stay in the reader's perspective. Because otherwise, I feel like I'm either revealing too much or, or not enough as time goes along. It's sort of, I can kind of feel when the natural breaks should occur. But when I'm editing, sometimes at that point, I will go back and just do one storyline to make sure that it's consistent. Um, that's a, just an, a different way to, to look at it. And then I'll usually go through the whole book again and and, and just read it start to finish. So, yeah. Because yeah. um, editing for our fans that don't know, it's a thing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. You know, well, and I think actually if you did it, the opposite you would still edit it the op you know the opposite is like if 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 you just stayed in one place and then wove it all together when you edit it that you would probably need to edit it separately than the, the other way yeah yes or exactly yeah mm -hmm. um i i just i i love i love little little peeks into author's process so yeah <laughs> um Same. This series is strongly historical romantic for a mystery, and um, especially the first one, a, a, a girl like a girl like you, mm -hmm. um, yeah, is 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 very much a this is a romance. It's a <laughs> it's historical, but it's also a mystery. So, who do you see yourself as? Good question. <laughs> Who knows? No. Um, you know, I think when I started writing this, I 
didn't, I'll just admit, I didn't really understand what I was doing. So I, again, I was like, well, what would I like to read? I'd like to read something historical, a little mystery, a little bit of romance. And now I realize that, you know, a lot of fans love that, but um, it's hard to market because yeah, what do you call yourself or where do you put these books on the virtual bookshelf? So in my heart of hearts, I, I have realized that I am a historical fiction author and I like having mystery elements because it's kind of like a built-in plot structure. So once you have that mystery figured out, then you have something for these characters to do throughout the whole book. And of course, there has to be some kind of love interest for me. So um, that's how this series sort of evolved. But really, I think I'm a historical fiction author because I've actually written two separate standalones that have nothing to do with the series that are straight up historical. So. Um, but our publisher. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I I love that that time frame in Chicago, and then also in in this book, they're also in Europe, which is right on the brink of war, and it's yeah, there's great historical stuff going on, so it's it's exciting to read about. Um, I tried to write a romance once, and I just wound up killing people. I'm like, you know what? I'm a history <laughs> author. <laughs> just. It's clear. Yeah. yeah. It is clear. It's like, what? why is that person dead? I'm like, because I was bored. Yeah. I <laughs> so yeah. there we go. Um, all right. The Ghent altarpiece, Just Judges yeah. Panel, plays a major role in this book and is based on a real life theft in 1934. Uh, where and when did you first discover um, this theft and panel and all of it? Well, um, as you said, they're back in Europe and I wanted them to go back because their honeymoon was so cut short by <laughs> Clive's father's death. And I felt like I had been cheated out of, you know, writing sort of this English or European, you know, sort of setting. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to have them go back. And I've already done the murdered man in the English village that was in book three. So I'm like, you know, I have to come up with something different. So my two thoughts were maybe some kind of stolen art or maybe something to do with the not the lead up to the war, the Nazis, that sort of thing. So I, I literally Googled stolen art, World War II era. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and the Gen's altarpiece popped up and I started reading about it and I'm, I was just immediately fascinated. And I'm like, this is perfect because it's a real life case. It was never solved, which gives me a huge license to do whatever I want to do. Exactly. With that because nobody actually knows what happened to it. And then it also had this sort of Nazi connection as well. I'm like, done perfect <laughs> <laughs> that that it, that has all kinds of stuff going on so yeah. it is um like the same or similar to the nazi program that is in the movie raiders for the lost raiders of the lost ark and yeah. you know that came out in what like 81 and we didn't have the <laughs> and so you were left when that movie came out thinking is that real? But right. now you have the internet. So the first thing I, I did when you got to this part of, of the book, when I got to this part of the book, was start Googling things. Um, oh. and, <laughs> and yeah, big, well, because I wanted to see it as, as well as the church piece, which is gorgeous. Um, and, and I wanted to you know, just it's like, okay, is this stuff really, really real? And you included a fantastic afterward, which I would have just gone to that if I'd known it was there, <laughs> um, <laughs> that has a full bibli bibliography. So my, my question is, how much did you deep dive on this research um, to like, you know, was it just like, oh, this is, this is all I need it is historical fiction or, or did you go down a rabbit hole like I did? Yeah, good question. Um, I I I do write historical, but I am usually not the author that that jumps down too many rabbit holes. I did that once in book four, which is a veil removed. Um, and I find that what happens to me, which is what I think happens to a lot of authors, um, 
is that you you just have so much information and you're just dying to put this in the book and you just can't put it all in the book it's too much it's too much info dump so i'm very conscious of that when i'm researching because i don't want to go too far because I know that I can't use it all anyway, but I did find this particular topic extremely interesting because, you know, it's covered on so many different websites that from the, the you know, really factual to, you know, the conspiracy theory weirdo sites. Yeah. And so <laughs> it was really fun to sort of read through all of these different interpretations of what actually happened to this painting. And as I mentioned in the um, in the acknowledgments of the author's note, um, there are and, and there are so many theories as to what really happened to this painting. I just found it, found it fascinating. And as I said, also, the actual 1934 theft, just that part of the story you could write a whole novel on that <laughs> theft. There's yeah. so many details and there's like a pastry shop across the church where it happened and all of these weird people were involved in that. But that's not even the whole story. I mean, the whole Plus story is so is heavy. Huge. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's heavy. so heavy. Yeah, yeah it right. takes like two or three big men to carry. So yeah, it's, it's not just something you stick in your pocket and wander off with. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, exactly. So it was fun, yeah. Have you seen the rest of the panels? Only online. Only yeah. online. <laughs> I love the internet. Um, yeah. <laughs> I will say it's the only book um, that I have written where I actually bought another book. Um, I didn't read it all, but I did skim through it. It's a whole history of this painting. And I just thought, you know what? I have to have this book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it is fascinating. Like, like I said, it's like I started reading about it and then immediately had to start looking at it and seeing what it looks like and all of those things. So, right, right. Yeah. Super fun. Um, so one of the things that I very much appreciated about uh, reading both this book and, and also the first book, because Henrietta co does come from a very, very poor family, um, is that money doesn't solve all your problems. Everybody has their issues in this book. And, um, and, and I just kind of want to know why, why did you, I, <laughs> all I can think of to call it is, is decide to keep it real. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. You know, I, I do think that it's a way to make your characters more believable and more relatable because the grass is always greener until right. you, you get there and then you realize hmm, maybe not. So I just think it's a way to really, yeah, as you're saying, keep it real to make the characters and the situations um, more realistic. And because, you know, let's face it, it's kind of good drama. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely adds adds conflict, but, but yeah. yeah, yeah, there's always a little a piece of, you know, as a reader, it's like, oh, but if I just lived there, I would be golden and, and, and yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yes maybe not no no maybe, maybe there not are other quite. issues that you don't that you would need to deal with yeah so i i really appreciate that because it does make the characters all feel real and grounded and and you know dealing with their own stuff and uh it, it just um it makes for very exciting reading um yeah. all right so finally what can we expect from henrietta and clive next is there going to wow. be a book seven? <laughs> I am editing book seven right now. It is Woo. the first draft is written. <laughs> so tentative title is called A Haunting at Lindley. So yeah, and it will be the series finale, unsadly. <laughs> so yes, I have to wrap up everybody's storyline <laughs> in one book. So, and then wrap it around this sort of mysterious haunting. So um, that is in the works and um and then after that i'm trying to think even beyond like what's the next step after that so i don't know it could i might do a spinoff series i might advance the series by 10 years so then it would be in the 40s or i'm thinking about really going out on a limb and maybe trying a um i'm sort of brainstorming a miss uh 
historical fantasy series. So it would be a, around a, a World War One nurse and she encounters a, a strange man. So <laughs> that's <awesome. laughs> awesome. Yeah. So we'll see. Read them all. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. So um, that about wraps us up for today. Again, thank you so much for meeting with me and giving this opportunity to your fans and our fans at Blackbird Writers. Um, for those who are not already connected to you, how can they reach out? Well, um, the best place would be my website, which is michellecoxwrites.com. And I have all the social media um, buttons on there where you can connect with me. Make sure to sign up for my newsletter because every couple of months I give away a huge gift package to one lucky subscriber. So it's like a full set of books, an iPad, luggage, jewelry, holiday stuff. <laughs> So it's really, really popular and it's only for subscribers only. So sign up. All right. That sounds great. Uh, thank you everybody for watching Blackbird Writers Presents Author Interviews. Bye. Thank you. Bye.